Thank you again for allowing me to join you wherever you are just to spend a few moments together in the Word of God. As we're looking at Luke's account of the life of Christ as he writes to Theophilus, that lover of God. Let's turn to Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. And we'll pick up with verse 41 in just a moment. As we do, let me ask you a simple question. A question that well, you can answer aloud or you can just think about. What is it that makes you cry? What is it that makes you sad? Maybe there's a situation in your life. Maybe it's just a movie that you watch. Maybe it's a certain song on the radio or that's on your or phone that you listen to on a regular basis. There is something that probably tears you up or makes you sad. What makes Jesus cry? We see one thing that makes Jesus cry in Luke chapter 19, verse 41. Luke 19, verse 41. And when he drew near and saw the city, Jerusalem, he wept over it, saying, Would that you, even you, had known on this day the things that make for peace. But now they were hidden from your eyes. For days will come upon you when your enemies will set up a barricade around you and surround you and hem you in on every side and tear you down to the ground and you and your children within you. They will not leave one stone upon another in you because you did not know the time of your visitation. As I read that, Jesus knows what's going to happen to Jerusalem. He knows the, the destruction of Jerusalem that's going to come in what we know in AD 70 when the Romans will destroy Jerusalem. Jesus is seeing that. Jesus is lamenting the fact that that is going to happen. He's lamenting the fact that, that God's people of that day and of the Old Testament will lose their place. What makes Jesus cry? Well, he's crying over Jerusalem, not just because they're being destroyed, but because the reason behind their destruction. Because as a nation, not every individual, but as a nation, they had rejected the Messiah. They had rejected God. And so their place was being taken away and given to a greater a greater number of people, I should say. And that is the entire world. Because through Jesus, everyone, Jew and Gentile, Paul will tell us, can come to God through Christ. But Israel at that time was losing their place as God's special people. His people now is the church, universal. His people now are Christians throughout the world. But that still doesn't mean that Jesus is going to rejoice over Jerusalem's downfall. It doesn't mean he's going to rejoice that people will abandon him and ignore him and ignore God. So if I can take this to the next step, what makes Jesus cry? When we when you or I ignore him, when we neglect God. Let's not bring tears into the eyes of Jesus. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear God, we thank you so much for your blessings. And Father, as we read today about Jesus weeping over Jerusalem, Father, we don't want to be the cause of your tears. We don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. We don't want to make Christ cry. Father, help us as individuals to, to live for you the way we should. And Father, be with your people, your church. Help us to be, well, help us to be your people. Helps to see our need to, to follow you and not chase after 
popularity or the world or whatever it might be that pulls us away from, from your word. Father, help us to be honest in our search for you. Father, forgive us when we fall short. And help us to return. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you again for allowing me to join you for just a few moments today. I look forward to our time together again. Until then, my prayer is, as always, that God will bless your day. Yeah.